it looks like the perfect moment to destroy a U.S. supercarrier. So why do military experts call attacking at this exact moment a guaranteed suicide mission? Picture this. Right now, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, two steel fortresses weighing a combined 150,000 tons are gliding side by side. The USS Gerald R. Ford is running parallel to a massive supply ship. They're so close, you could throw a baseball from one deck to the other, 120 feet. That's all the distance separating a $13 billion nuclear-powered warship from a tanker pumping millions of gallons of explosive jet fuel through thick hoses. They're moving at just 13 knots, 24 kilometers per hour, slower than a jogger. The carrier can't maneuver, can't speed up, locked into this precise course and speed, tethered by fuel lines. From above, it looks like two skyscrapers trying to drive side by side on a highway. Armchair military analysts love to laugh at this moment. They call it the carrier's most vulnerable time, a sitting duck tied to a slow tanker, unable to dodge. They say one missile, one drone swarm, one torpedo could end American naval dominance in a single catastrophic explosion. They're wrong, dead wrong. The U.S. Navy doesn't call this a weakness. They call it the death box. What looks like vulnerability is actually a trap set with surgical precision. When enemies think they see an easy target, they're stepping into a kill zone where every weapon system is primed and waiting. The moment USS Ford slows to refuel, it enters its most lethal defensive posture. Any adversary who fires on this formation won't face a fair fight. They'll face instant annihilation from systems they can't see, can't predict, and can't survive. Today, we're running a war game scenario, showing exactly what happens when an enemy pulls the trigger. If you respect the tactical genius behind this, type proud in the comments right now. Here's the brutal physics. The Navy calls it unrep underway replenishment. Ships must maintain exactly 120 to 160 feet separation. For vessels over a thousand feet long, that's terrifyingly narrow. Three school buses, end to end. Speed locks at precisely 13 knots. Go slower, you lose steering control. Go faster, you trigger the Venturi effect. Water squeezed between hulls creates suction, pulling the ships together. One steering error, and that vacuum accelerates a collision before anyone can react. A destroyer captain once described it. You're threading a needle while riding a roller coaster in the dark. The Navy has been perfecting this dance for over 70 years. You're not fighting an enemy. You're fighting hydrodynamics. The USS Ford cannot cheat these physical laws. This is the most dangerous ballet on Earth. Now. See it from an adversary's perspective. The carrier is locked on a predictable course, at crawling speed, physically connected to a tanker. It can't dodge, can't sprint away. Next to it sits a supply ship carrying millions of gallons of JP-5 jet fuel, a floating bomb. Chinese military forums call this the golden window. They see two vulnerable targets tied together, moving slow and predictable. They're about to learn their fatal mistake. Before any weapon fires, an invisible war is raging. Suppose a hostile force launches 30 suicide drones to overwhelm the defenses. Multiple targets, different vectors. They're convinced surprise will work. They're already detected. The Arleigh Burke destroyers have been tracking every electromagnetic emission in a 200-mile radius. The AN-SLQ-32 electronic warfare system immediately identifies the drone control signals. But this isn't defensive. It's an offensive weapon. How does it work? It doesn't just jam signals with noise. It captures the enemy's radar pulse, clones it, corrupts the data, and fires it back. The system basically hacks the missile's brain mid-flight. Detection to electronic kill, under two seconds. 
the enemy operator watches 30 green dots converge. Then the screen goes black. Drones tumble into the ocean or detonate midair, defeated by pure energy and algorithms. For smaller threats that slip through, cheap drones too simple to jam, the Navy has Helios. High energy laser systems firing coherent beams at 186,000 miles per second. Think of it like a magnifying glass focusing the sun, but amplified a million times. It delivers 60 kilowatts of heat that melts plastic, ignites fuel, fries electronics. The drone vaporizes. Each laser shot costs a few dollars in electricity. Compare that to a million dollar interceptor missile. But suppose the enemy isn't playing with drones, they're sending a squadron of strike fighters or long-range bombers to launch massive cruise missiles. They think they can stay out of range of the ship's guns. They're forgetting one thing. The USS Ford isn't just a ship, it's a floating air base. Long before any threat appears on the horizon, they have to survive. The steel roof. High above the formation, the combat air patrol is already hunting. The E-2D. Advanced Hawkeye acts as the eye of God, detecting threats 400 miles away. It doesn't need to fight. It acts as a silent conductor, whispering targeting data to the apex predators below. F-35C, Lightning, two stealth fighters, and F-A-18, Super Hornets. How does it work? It's a deadly high-low mix. The E-2D pushes targeting data directly to the F-35's helmet display via an encrypted network. The F-35 pilots don't even need to turn on their own radar, keeping them completely invisible electronically. An F-35 pilot described it, hunting with night vision goggles while the enemy stumbles in the dark. And the Super Hornets? They are the sledgehammer. While the F-35 is the silent assassin, the F-A-18 acts as the missile truck. Because it carries weapons externally, it brings the sheer volume of fire. It hangs back, loaded to the teeth with air-to-air -air missiles. The stealthy F-35 finds the targets without being seen, and the Super Hornet launches a saturation attack from 100 miles away. These pilots don't wait for the enemy to get close. They engage, beyond visual range. A flight of enemy bombers checks their radars one last time. The sky looks empty. They think they are safe. That is their final illusion. Suddenly, they're met by a wall of AIM-120, AMRAAM missiles, fired from an empty sky. Each missile has a range exceeding 100 miles. By the time their radar warning receivers scream, the missiles are already terminal. They never saw the fighters. They never saw the ship. The enemy formation is broken and burning. Before they knew the fight had started, the air around the carrier belongs to the United States Navy. But let's escalate. Suppose the adversary launches a hypersonic missile at Mach 5, designed to penetrate every defensive layer, aimed at the supply ship's starboard side. Here's where analysts think they've found the gap. When Ford refuels, the supply ship positions on its starboard side, creating a blind spot. The carrier's own defensive weapons are physically blocked, its radar masked by a 230-meter steel wall. That blindness dies instantly. The supply ship never travels alone. There's always a guardian in the shotgun position, a Ticonderoga cruiser or Arleigh Burke destroyer, positioned three quarters of a mile behind, offset to starboard, exactly covering the blind spot. This isn't just a bodyguard, it's a floating supercomputer with Aegis combat system linked through NIFKA, Naval Integrated Fire Control. Here is the magic. The shotgun ship doesn't need to see the threat with its own radar. It fires blindly at a target tracked by a plane hundreds of miles away. Vertical launch cells pop open. An SM-6 missile streaks skyward. This is the only weapon on Earth that can intercept ballistic missiles in terminal phase and engage hypersonic threats. Range, over 250 miles. The SM-6 doesn't chase its target, futile against Mach 5. It calculates the intercept point, accelerates to meet the threat, head on. 
At convergence, the missile's blast fragmentation warhead detonates while traveling at Mach 3.5 plus, combining explosive power with devastating kinetic energy. The collision releases energy like a car hitting a wall. At 600 miles per hour, the sky erupts in a fireball. What was a hypersonic threat becomes harmless debris. But war is messy. Let's assume a few advanced cruise missiles manage to survive the long-range barrage. They drop down to wave-top height, weaving aggressively. They think they've found the weak link. They aim straight for the supply ship, knowing it lacks heavy armor. They're wrong. They forgot who's standing right next to it. First, the ESSM Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile launches from the escort destroyers. Don't let the bird name fool you. It uses thrust vectoring vanes to steer the exhaust, allowing it to pull 50 G turns. A fighter pilot blacks out at 9 Gs. This missile pulls forces that would liquefy a human being. It isn't just fast, it's agile enough to chase down a target trying to dodge. But some threats get too close for the escorts. The missile is seconds away from impacting the supply ship. Suddenly, the side of the aircraft carrier erupts in smoke. The USS Ford unleashes its RIM-116, rolling airframe missile. Unlike any other missile, this one spins, like a supersonic drill bit, as it flies. Why does it spin? To keep its infrared eye perfectly steady on the target, while the body maneuvers violently, it locks onto the heat signature of the threat aimed at its neighbor. 360 rotations per second, faster than a Formula One engine. At full throttle, the enemy missile thinks it has an easy kill. Instead, it's intercepted by a Mach 2 Predator, launched from the carrier's sponson. The threat is shredded miles away. The supply ship didn't have to lift a finger. The carrier just reminded everyone, nobody touches my gas tank. But suppose by miracle, a fragment keeps coming. The final layer activates. Phalanx, close-in weapon system. Sailors call it R2-D2, six rotating barrels, controlled by autonomous radar. When it fires, it makes a distinctive like fabric tearing in the sky. Veterans who've heard that sound say, it's the most beautiful noise in the world, because if you hear it, you're still alive. It doesn't aim like a sniper. It throws a shotgun spread of tungsten. Phalanx fires 4,500 rounds per minute. That's 75 bullets every second. The system creates a literal wall of metal in front of the ship. It relies on kinetic energy, smashing the missile into dust before it can explode. The supply ship is wrapped in an impenetrable cocoon of steel. Below the surface, it's a different hunt. The ocean surrounding this formation isn't water. It's a transparent prison. Using a technique called triangulation, computers compare the split-second delay of sound, reaching different buoys, to pinpoint the enemy's exact coordinates. The math is so precise, it can tell you not just where the submarine is, but which direction it's heading, and how fast. Imagine you're a submarine captain, Diesel Electric Kilo Class. You've stalked this formation for hours. Carrier tied to tanker. Predictable course. You're calculating the torpedo shot at the supply ship's hull. You don't hear. The Virginia Class attack submarine. That's been shadowing you for 30 minutes. Behind you. Below you. Quieter than ambient ocean noise. The Virginia is so silent. It's called a hole in the water. It has a Mark 48, ad cap torpedo, positioned for a killing shot. The hunter became the hunted. But the Navy doesn't stop at defense. America doesn't play to tie. America plays to win absolutely. An attack on a carrier strike group during unrep triggers immediate retaliation. Point a weapon at American naval forces. You don't get a second chance. 
As one admiral put it, we don't do proportional response. We do definitive response. Vertical launch cells open again. Tomahawk cruise missiles streak skyward. 20, 30, leaving white smoke trails. Each carries a thousand pound warhead with thousand mile range. They use terrain contour matching, scanning the ground below and comparing it to a stored map. They hug the ocean surface, navigate through valleys to avoid radar, smart enough to choose their own path. These missiles navigate with accuracy, measured in feet, not miles. The target? The exact location where that attack launched. Within the hour, they cease to exist. Command structures decapitated. Launch platforms reduced to rubble. This isn't proportional response. This is demonstration that attacking American naval forces carries consequences beyond calculation. When smoke clears, the same two ships remain. USS Gerald R. Ford and the supply ship, still connected by fuel lines, still maintaining that precise 120-foot separation, still moving at steady 13 knots, calm, proud, utterly unchanged. The formation that looked like vulnerability has proven what the Navy always knew, not weakness, a statement of dominance. Only the world's most powerful Navy dares conduct this operation in broad daylight, anywhere on Earth. Adversaries can build bigger ships, develop faster missiles, but they can't replicate the multi-layered defense integration, the data network sharing information in real time. Most importantly, they can't duplicate decades of training and steel nerves of American sailors, executing these operations with clinical precision. The supply ship isn't the Achilles heel, it's the heart of the Leviathan. And the Leviathan doesn't know fear. Many analysts claim the carrier era is over. After seeing this comprehensive breakdown, do you really believe that? Or do you believe this? As long as the stars and stripes flies on a carrier's mast, the world's oceans remain under US Navy control. Real strength isn't how hard you punch. It's standing firm in a storm of incoming fire and delivering a counter-strike so devastating, your enemy never recovers. That's what the US Navy does, better than anyone in history. If this breakdown of the death box opened your eyes, hit that like button and subscribe. Type death box in the comments if you respect this tactical genius. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.